Today's episode of The Mom Game is presented by our friends at Gateway GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new GMCs and GM certified certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaygmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway GMC offers complimentary car washes, for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaygmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. You know who else is professional grade is golden chick for so many reasons. But one of the things that they're doing right now, which is really cool, is they are giving back to their community focused roots with the return of their local school charity initiative. And this is the one where they target individual schools near golden chick restaurants. They support over 230 schools with this system wide give back initiative. It is really cool. So what they're doing is they're selling churros and 50 cents from every order of their new New churro menu offering is going to go back to the schools in the surrounding area right there by that golden chick that you're eating your churro at. And this is going to be going on now through December 29th. They also are featuring their new lemon pepper wings to accompany their spicy menu mainstay, those wicked wings, which are so wicked and so good. The zesty lemon pepper seasoning will coat hand breaded crispy wings. It makes for the perfect bite. For additional ways uh, for people to find value, Golden Chick will have specials on their wings, including the popular Wing Wednesday and weekends promotion with 24 wings and four freshly baked rolls for $19.99. And then, of course, you could just go with a classic order like the iconically crispy golden tenders. Golden Chick is highlighting its Lucky 13 Tenders meal deal with four freshly baked yeast rolls for $19.99. 13 tenders, four freshly baked rolls that can feed the whole dang family for only $19.99. So many different reasons to go check out Golden Chick. We highly recommend. And we're very grateful for their partnership here on The Mom Game. Yay, Golden Chick. And welcome to episode 237 of The Mom Game. I'm Emily Jones in a hotel room in San Francisco. Julie is in the Coppola Studios uh, holding things back. Holding things down. I'm probably holding them back, too. Um, (laughs) If it weren't for me, this thing could have really exploded by now. (laughs) Honey, if if it weren't for you, this thing would be dead. Just so you know, if it makes you feel any better. Um, So we are not together. Obviously, I am on the last road trip of the Rangers season. We are officially eliminated from contention, playoffs, all that fun stuff. So the season will end. This upcoming Sunday, September, what is it, 29th, will be the final day of the regular season. Wrapping things up on the road. My last road trip of the year, obviously, since it's the teams. But I only had two road trips this year. I did one in April and then one in September, but I didn't travel uh, most of the year. So this is a little new for me. Um, Yeah, I used to Kind of nice to get away. Yeah. Yeah, gosh, sorry. Um, I used to do like 30 to 45 games on the road um, back in the day. And I was texting with my girlfriends last night and um, I went, ran to Target once I got in and uh, ordered a grilled cheese sandwich and french fries and stayed in the room and um, watched a re- really weird and crazy show called Monsters about the Menendez brothers. Oh my lordy. Um, anyway, oh. it was a great, you was know, kind scary? of night in the hotel, but I'm like, um, no, it's about, you don't remember, you're too young. You don't remember the Menendez brothers, do yeah. you? Uh-uh. Oh, Jesus, Were they bad Julie. guys? Um, well, they killed their parents. Oh. Um, yeah. You like shouldn't Beverly do that. Hills, he was like a, we don't he, endorse he that here on the mom. Uh, we don't endorse killing your present parents. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's a fascinating story. That I knew about because when this happened, I was probably junior high age, I think. And so I knew kind of what had happened. I knew these boys killed their parents, whatever. But now this kind of, and it's not a documentary, but I think it's like 
I think based on truth. I don't know. But anyway, it's fascinating. And it shows the whole like reason, you know, kind of the things that led up to it and how effed up this family was. And oh man. anyway, uh, yeah, kind of sidetracked, but yeah, I highly recommend it. I'm on episode six. I powered through, I had a four hour flight yesterday. So I powered through like four episodes yesterday and then a couple in the hotel last night. All right. But anyway, yeah, back out on the road and um, I'm going to try to enjoy it. Um, you know, you just never know. Like um, I go on year to year contracts like this could very well be not very well, but it could be my last road trip. It could be my last season. Who I mean, who knows? I don't I'm not forecasting that or anything like that. But, you know, I think the further I've gone in my career, the the more I realize that like it could it, you know, the end is coming at some point. I just don't know exactly when. So, and who knows? This could be it. So, anyway, in trying to kind of take it all in. All, unfortunately, <laughs> it is. Sometimes. It really is. Okay, but I have to tell you something. Yeah. Um. So I, I went to the gym this morning, and um, I was going to get on the Peloton, but the Peloton wasn't available, so I did Stairmaster. Completely irrelevant information that is not important at all, but mm -hmm. just in case you were wondering. Yeah, I was wondering. Um, so anyway, I get, well, I'm sure you were. So I get off the stairmaster or whatever. It's not a stairmaster. It's like those th that it's like a it's like a the stairs that just keep going yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, they really. It's so it's not like the stairmaster, not the it's elliptical, like this. It's but like, like the one big no, stair it's... where you kind of ride the stair yes. all the way down. Yes, and if you want, you right. can go do 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 really faster. If you want to be lazy, you can just go oh like a gosh. little elevator. Okay, yeah. so I did like a guided class, and this lady, like, she tried to mix it up, you know, and so it was like step two, and then step down, and I'm like, I can't step down. There's no, it's the ground. Like, what are you doing, woman? Anyway, totally beside the point. So I get off the stairmaster. I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna hit some weights. It was arm day, Julie. Oh, goodness. and. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't have day. I do the same shit every day. Um, <laughs> did you have your big milk so, jug of water too? <laughs> I, I did not. I did not. <laughs> the sleep no monster gets you. This is what <laughs> oh, my gym cliches. has to offer. Okay. They do. Yeah. Okay. I turn the corner and there's a man and I recognize him and I go, holy shit. It's President fucking Obama. What? President Obama okay. was in the hotel gym. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is a WWE D situation. What would Emily do when okay. faced with a situation where she is in a hotel gym with President Obama? Okay, so I what and I was on a call with you while all of this was happening. You didn't tell me so that the president was there. Call. Well, I couldn't talk. It's yeah. a quiet gym. That's why I was trying to be really quiet, but freaking President Obama was in there. So I walked past him and I'm like <laughs> like I didn't realize it when my first time and I was like, Oh my God, that's president Obama. So then comes secret service. And I was like, okay, let's just be cool. Be cool. So I'm in a separate, so he's going to the cardio area where my stair master was. And then I was going to the weight area. It's not a huge gym. And so I'm like, okay, just keep doing your normal thing. Don't freak out. It's, you know, it's, it's just the president. Um, obviously I'm close friends with ones already. Yeah. So no, I'm just kidding. Besties. Um, but anyway, so I'm thinking, I mean, I want to, so of, of course I text my girlfriends. I'm like, Obama's in the gym, like all caps, exclamation point. They're like, holy shit, what? You know, secret service, take a picture. And I'm like, okay, play it cool. So I was going to try to like take a selfie, at least of the secret service guy, because he was in view, but President Obama was not. And so, but I could never do it. I kept like fumbling around and like look, trying to look busy and stuff. And I felt like he was there's only like five of us in the gym and I felt like he was kind of eyeing me like, what is this unhinged middle-aged white did woman going to try to do here? So no, we didn't. So I did right before I left, I finished my, I finished my exercises and I went up to him and I, I had smiled at him, the secret service guy and I, you know, whatever. Like, and so I went over to do something. I was also scouting out the situation and I was like, would it, be totally inappropriate if I asked the president for a selfie and he looked at me and he goes, you know, he, it, this is his personal time. And he was on the treadmill. So it wasn't going to be like, Hey, Prez, you want to you know, take a quick selfie on your treadmill? Like it was right. totally inappropriate. And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have asked, but I was like, I kind of have to, you know, you got to shoot your shot. Yes. I was like, well, and I was like, well, I get it. He's on the treadmill, but I'm sure you'd let me take a picture if he wasn't on the treadmill. I'm, I don't think he would, but anyway. It was crazy to see. And then, so I walk out of, 
I walk out of the gym and like right there is like within four feet of me is another secret service agent. I was like, Oh, cause the door, there's like not a window. So I just walked out and I was like, Oh, and he was like, I mean, they're just, I mean, they're serious business. They're trying to, I mean, especially in light of what's happened, you know, in the last month or so with assassination attempts on former presidents, I'm sure they, I mean, they take their job very seriously as they should. So I was like, you know, quit being a, you know, weirdo and just go to your fucking room, Emily. So then, so I was like, Oh, and so then I turned the corner and then there was another one and I was like, okay. And then I like get on the elevator and there was another oh one, there was gosh. three or four of them on the path back to the elevator. So I have no idea what he was doing here or what he is doing here, but he is here in San Francisco working out at the hotel gym. Wow. That I, and that. So it was, yeah, it was really, it was kind of cool. It that was really, I mean, cool. he's a president. So you felt like What's you had to kind of go here through? with my hair. Oh my gosh. But oh. look, so my hair is no so thin. About it. Okay. You're good. So you felt like uh, you had to I go try, through the secret service okay. to talk to him. Like you could, you could, you've just been like, hey, I president. felt like if I, I felt like, I think if I would have initially, like when I first saw him, if I would have said something like, but I just was kind of like speechless. Yeah. I didn't know. That's someone you never put expected it together to be face to face with. You're not expecting to see a former president of the United States of America in the hotel gym. Like it's just not on your bingo card. So I didn't, I didn't act fast enough, kind of disappointed in myself because I could have thrown out so many things, you know, like, right. How's Michelle? Um, you know, uh-huh. that's pretty much where it ends. I don't really know what else <laughs> I would have said, but you, so yeah, he was on a I treadmill. Like I definitely. So he got on the treadmill. You could have yeah. been like 6.6 6 6 or, you know, like guessed his number. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, where's your, what's your max speed? Yeah. What are we doing? Sprint today? Interv- like, get, tri- yeah, intervals? You get intervals today? Or uh-huh. what are we doing? Try not uh, to trip. Or I could have been really obnoxious and like gotten on the treadmill next to him and just like run as hard as I can and passed out within three <laughs> minutes. But I did none of those things. Oh, um, well, that's pretty but, cool. yeah, he's... He, yeah, and he looks great. Like he looks super fit, and you know, you hear all the stories about him playing basketball and stuff like that when he was president. But anyway, cool moment. Uh, I yeah. wish I would have had you know photo evidence, but I, I promise I saw Barack Obama in the hotel gym. That is very cool. And and this is water, by the way. Just so you know, I'm not drinking okay. beer or anything. Yeah, well, if yeah. you were, I wouldn't judge. No, no, no I judge. Yeah, yeah. You know what I said today? Um, okay, what's did you I said for the first time in an email because you know how I'm I'm business bitch <laughs> lately. Oh yeah. So okay. I send a lot of emails, <laughs> and so I'm like trying to figure out Ooh, my like so email small talk. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh no. Because apparently there's like there we go. there's some words you use that are like people hate that get a lot of emails like just following up like when no one replies you don't uh, say checking just, in just wanted to check back in then they're like oh kill uh-huh. me so I'm trying to not do yeah. that. But I don't know. So, like, Happy Friday is legit on a Friday. But today I said Happy Tuesday, and it felt real icky. I don't know what you say for Tuesday. <laughs> like, uh, Happy Good Morning. Yeah, I don't. Ha- happy Tuesday happy just good doesn't. Tuesday. <laughs> happy Tuesday doesn't make sense. Like, no one's happy really on a Tuesday. Monday you have like the fake happiness, you know, where you're like, okay, another start to the week, and everyone fakes it till they make it. And you're kind of happy uh-huh. to force it. But Tuesday is just like, so I know I was, Blah. I was really annoyed at myself. I'm like, who and then am you get I? To- what are you doing with your life? Why are you and emailing you- people? Happy and fucking you- <laughs> Tuesday at 830 in the morning. What are you doing? And then, and then you get to Wednesday and you could be like, happy hump day. Yes. And then Thursday could be like, oh, weekend's almost here. Exactly. We've almost made it to the finish Weekend line. Eve. Yeah. Yeah. And then Friday uh, oh, is the obvious. Happy Friday. One. So Tuesday, I need to figure yeah. out a nice little uh, greeting for Tuesday. Happy Tubular Tuesday. <laughs> Something really stupid. Oh, wow. Yeah. Taco Tuesday. Sure. If it's See- a taco affiliated thing, that'd be even better. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, let's that, see how, that was let's my see morning. How tubular Tuesday works out. For tubular you. Tuesday. Yeah, let's see how Tubular Tuesday works out. <laughs> tubular Tuesday. Give it a sh- give it a shot. Yeah. So while um, you were hanging out with President Obama, I was trying to figure out how to write a dumb email on a Tuesday morning. So you win. <laughs> um, this could also be a news desk, but at some point, I do want to hear about your um, other encounter with a huge celebrity over the last week when you chatted with Matthew McConaughey. Oh. 
So yes, just yes, I FYI, will tell you for sure. we need to get to that. Well, what do we call that? Put a pin in that. We'll put mm-hmm. a pin in Let's that. Let's put a pin in that's that. Business, and then we'll circle talk. back. We'll put a pin in that. Mm-hmm. So, oh, circle back yeah. with the pin. Uh, okay. I have to ask about, we promised the audience a cranberry update. You, we told us last week that the cat's been dead for like multiple days and you still have not told your kids. So what's the, what do we got? Yeah. How are they grieving the loss of their dear sweet cranberry? Cranberry is my cat I've had for 15 years since I was a mm-hmm. wee little single lady living in uptown Dallas in an apartment. And, uh, I've had her a long time. She's been through a lot with me. And yeah, Cranberry has gone to cat heaven. And uh, she was living with my parents. Julie, did you tell your children? I'm resetting if people didn't hear. (gasps) What if we have new listeners every day? That's what they used to say on the radio. New new listeners every minute. You're trying to avoid the fact that you still haven't told your kids that the cat is dead and has been dead for almost a month. It hasn't been a month. Cranberry well, is in cat heaven. Uh, well, as it was the same time Anna was in the hospital, so it was like two week, two weeks. I mean, it happened like literally the same day. So it'll be two weeks this Saturday. Yeah, it'll be three weeks this Saturday since Anna was in the hospital. I thought maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but yeah, it too is. too long. But okay. it's such a weird deal because. You usually with a pet dying, like they're there, right? So they see it and you all experience it together and then you kind of move on. But Cranberry was living with her grandparents <laughs> in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> in Austin. She, she was, was not a, okay, she, really. <laughs> she is very okay. Remember, she was uh, she was hanging out on the catio in Austin. Uh She was at it was basically cat hospice because I knew we were getting near the end, and I didn't have in me to deal with it. And she was also peeing and pooping everywhere in the house, and it was really disgusting. So they put her on the the catio outside in Austin, and um, I did get an update that my stepdad says if the kids want a cat skit for her, he will build a cat skit. So. Of course he will. But and my mom was actually asking me today. She was like, would you rather us, like we, they, they still have her, they're, they're uh, keeping her mm. on ice or something. Okay. So anyway, she was like, would you rather. On ice. <laughs> <laughs> like she's champagne. Oh. Cran- Crampaign. <laughs> oh. I like to think that Cranny would be okay with me laughing at her. Um, but. She was asking me, like, do you want us? Do you want us to just take her and bury her this weekend because they're going to the ranch, and then you can just kind of tell them, or do you want to like them to be there? So that's like a hard question. I think they need to. I think, or they said they could take her to the vet and just cremate her and be done with it, which was what we did with her younger sister, Blueberry. Um, so I don't know. I think that it's nice to have a little like grave. We've never done that, but like something with like a little bit of closure where then they can go say bye to her. What do you think? What do you think? Or should she just disappear into yeah the abyss? I mean, I don't. I think that would be a nice gesture. I don't know mm-hmm. that it's necessary, but if Ellie's looking for a project, then tell him to get after the cat skit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like maybe by next show I'll have more updates. That's what I got for I'm now. I'm not banking on it. I am not banking on it. I told Kelly it. he had to deal with it, uh, and he's not. I don't want to do it. Uh, okay. All right. I understand. Um, okay. Let's get moving on from Obama and Cranberry. Yeah. Uh, wanted to mention um, what a great time we had at our Kinder Scott event. Um, in our, you know, we talk about Coppola all the time because we're in the Coppola studios, but uh, Coppola came out. We had so many people. We had such a great turnout to see the launch of the Cowboys collection and our, you know, choices. And it was really, really fun. Um, so we're super thankful to Jasmine and the No Puppet team for getting that set up with Kendra Scott. Super grateful to Kendra Scott. I think that's going to be a great uh, relationship and partnership um, between us. And I just thought it was great. So thankful for all the mom gamers that came out to support the Coven foundation and it was just a lot of fun um so i thought you and jasmine did the the bulk of the work on that i'm 
I, I thought it turned out great and I just wanted to congratulate you and also thank Coppola for being there because that yeah. made it super fun too. Yeah, it was super fun. I know the Prosecco went fast. That Prosecco is so good. Um, it's so good. But yeah, it was like we had we chatted with them today, can, the Kindred team, and they were saying, and I agreed, it was just like a really fun vibe in the air. Like a lot of people excited to be there, excited to celebrate, excited to kind of have a night out. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. My favorite part was the bar with the mom game logo on it. It was like a, is this, it was I like know. a surreal kind of moment walking up and being like, oh my God, the Kendra Scott party with a bar with the mom game logo on it. Oh, and look, Rob's got some photos. So there are some of our photos from the event. As you can see, a great turnout. There's Dave, um, and all these ladies and the sweet manager of the store in her stars jersey. But yeah, I mean, everywhere you yeah, look, they in were that fantastic. Store, it was so fun. The cutest stuff. I ended up buying um, a couple things. I bought there's the earrings right there that I have on right now. That's part of my co collection in the mom game. And then my necklace, which is writer Anna. And then my birthstone. There's Emily's beautiful collection. And there's both of ours. So it was. Yeah, it was so cool. Really cool. Look at mine so plain, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> my collection is very plain. But a lot so of people that's... like that. And I, it's kind of hidden, yeah. but I've got a tennis ball necklace on that I bought um, that night because I've been wanting a tennis necklace. So. I got one. Oh, cute! I'm busting I out um, today. I got Hattie some. Yeah, I got Hattie some earrings. You know, because those little young ears, once they get their ears pierced, like you don't want to jack with, you know, cheap, low quality yeah. earrings. Um, she already had her holes close up once. So when we got them repaired, I was like, you will not wear cheap earrings. We have got to, you know, stay on top of that, so yeah. you don't have to do it again. So anyway, I got her some cute little hoop earrings that she really likes. And so yeah, it was a ton of fun. It was. Yeah, so thanks to Kendra Scott and Coppola and Kane Russell for being a part of it. It was super fun. We can't wait to do it again, hopefully, and I think pretty soon. Pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. More to come. We can't say. We can't say. It's secret, secret. Yes. Uh, quick question to back up for one second. When did Hattie get her ears pierced? So she got him pierced for the first time. I mean, she may have been like four. Okay. Um, and it was totally unplanned, unexpected. We were at, we were visiting my sister in Virginia after Christmas one year. We went to the mall and she just got it in her head that she wanted to get her ears pierced. And I was like, okay, fine. Um, if you want to do it, it was so dramatic. So she got the first one done and then freaked out. And then I was like, well, it, we're, you're, we're going to finish the job. Okay. I feel like I remember this. So this I was think, in the life of the mom yeah, game. The whole, I, yeah. <clears throat> oh, was it? I think so. And that wasn't. Okay. Maybe it was. Anyway. No, 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 no. You're remembering the target one. Oh. There's a whole ear okay. piercing saga within yeah, yeah. the family. That's what I remember. So we got And you were really pissed. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh. Anyway. So, yes. So then I think the second. I think every person in that mall in Virginia heard her get her second ear pierced because it was very dramatic. Uh, so anyway, we go through the whole thing and then she keeps them in, but then they started getting infected and it just, then they started like, uh, you know, the hole started getting bigger. She started getting infected. It just wasn't worth it. So we're like, I said, screw it. We're taking them out. Let them grow up. We'll get them pierced again when you're older. So then a few years ago, she thought she was ready. And then we that's when we went to the Target when they had a pop-up, Rowan pop-up. And it was so dramatic and she was so ridiculous. And I was so livid and you already paid for the stupid earrings and they disinfected them so we couldn't use them again. And she flipped out and there's people waiting and I'm having social anxiety, mm. stress pits. I mean, I was dying. Yeah. And then we left there and I was like, you are not getting your ears pierced until you're 18 years old and you will pay for every single bit of it after you pay me back for these earrings. I mean, whatever. Uh, so she's like, uh, okay, cool, fine. So anyway, she decided she wanted to um, do it. We took a trip. I had a, a road trip in New York. It was either last year or year before. And my sister-in-law brought the kids and met me and we did fun stuff in New York while we played a series against the Yankees. And, um, so I told her, I said, I'm not taking you, I'm not doing that again. If you can, if you want to talk your aunt into doing it, that's totally fine. And Kelly's great. And so she talked aunt Kelly into taking her to get her ears pierced when we were in New York. Uh -huh. Um, Henry and I went to the nine 11 museum and while we were there, they went and got her ears pierced. So I was not present for the second piercing, the third overall attempt at piercing. Um, so that happened when she was like 10, nine okay. or 10. 
That's so nice. you have someone. It's been you a can saga, but now uh, everything's exactly. <laughs> so everything's good. Um, the ears are great, and now she's rocking some cute little. Kinder Scott hoops. Oh, good. Yeah, Anna's six, and a lot of her friends have it, and she's asking me, but I, I don't feel like dealing with any of that right now. Like more things, like you said, yeah. to keep up with, like another place that could get infected. Like, and poor Anna, like she's already got inhalers. I got to keep up with and remember. I'm like, I don't need you having any more things on your person that I have to deal with. <laughs> so selfishly, yeah, I, yeah and I mean. Eh. She's going to wait a little bit longer. And it's not hard when they're, when they're ready. And especially when they're old enough, like they've got to turn them and clean them. And I mean, it's not that big of a deal because that first pair stays in for like six weeks before you can even take them out. Maybe it's two. I don't know. But it's like, there's not, it's pretty, it's not like it's some big deal. It's just a matter of if they're going to be an asshole when they're sitting in that chair and actually let it happen, you know, or if they're going to be cool with it, you know? Yeah. Things that are not supposed to, that aren't a big deal, just end up being a big deal in my world. Like this kind of transitions into what we need to talk about. Like when I tried to wear contacts and it was just terrible, like you can't remember them, you lose them, they dry up. Mm -hmm. One busted into my eyeball or like, or split in my eyeball. And I was having to drive like this because like to get to the doctor because it was in pain. Like it shouldn't be a big deal, but it is. So that's part of the reason I'm hesitant for her ears to be pierced. But um, that's also part of the reason I am so, so, so grateful for our friends over at Tylock George Eye Care, Emily, because I don't ever have to wear contacts or glasses again. Yeah. And if you are tired of wearing contacts and or glasses, custom lens replacement from Tylock George Eye Care is one of many life-changing options from the trusted ophthalmology experts at Tylock George You can see your world clearly from both long distance and up close. No more readers. That's custom lens replacement from Tylock George, which is, trust me, life changing. That's the surgery I had. Julie had the LASIK because she's young and her eyeballs are still fresh, unlike mine. But they do offer 24 months free interest free financing with approved credit. You've got questions about your options. All you have to do is reach out to Tylock George, whether it's LASIK or contact lens replacement, they're going to tell you what is best for you. So schedule your free consultation at Tylock.com. That's Tylock.com slash TMG actually to get a special discount for the mom game listeners. Uh, If you give them a call, just mention the mom game. They will hook you up with that discount. So don't forget our exclusive code is tylock.com slash TMG or mention the mom game. You call Tylock George. Thank you to those fellas. I was able to read that without any readers. Yay. Um, All right, let's get into a little sportsy stuffy. Um, Cowboys, again, for the second week in a row, I got off work. Uh, We had our final home game of the season on Sunday. I opted not to fly with the team so I could have another night at home um, and kind of get my ducks in a row before this last trip. So I was like, I was going to make it home for the second half. Couldn't wait to to just lay on my couch and hang out with my fam and watch the Cowboys. And for the second week in a row, they are just getting their ass handed to them. Yep. And it's not even fun. So I got up and repotted a plant and said, screw the Cowboys. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then they come back and make it interesting. But then I was so checked out. I was like, well, just tell me if they win. Yeah. I just want them to be competitive. It just stinks. It's yeah. Not fun when First not good. win of the season for Baltimore. Although with Lamar Jackson, I don't know. He's so good. Dude, he's so fun to watch. Yeah, he's great. He is Ah, he's legit. And yeah. not shocking at all that he would be the better quarterback in this game. Um, but I am the same. Like, I s- sat down. Like, Ryder had a flag football game at three that I didn't go to. I had some girls come over. Uh, so the little girls didn't have to go sit in the heat for the football game. So I was like, great, I'll just watch this game. They're playing upstairs. And, they, I mean, it, I, I, I don't know. Like, who wants to subject themselves to that for hours on a Sunday when there's so many other things you could do, like do a potted plant, you know, or just like (laughs) stare at paint dry or, you know, like, I don't know, cook something, even though you never cook, but you suddenly get the urge to go to the kitchen because the game's so bad. Uh, That's kind of the vibes that, that the Cowboys have been sending out lately with the way that they're playing and uh, the defense once again, just like lackluster and all of the quotes after the game saying like we need to basically saying like we know we can be better and we're not trying like we don't care like the give a 
crap level is like way low with the team and um, they're not all playing as one. And, and that's the kind of stuff that like, well, two things for me, it's just like vomit. Like how much money are you making to play football? Go out there and try on every single play. It's not that hard. And then second of all, to me, that's coaching. Like it's just coaching. It's like the, the whole aura, I guess, surrounding the team and, and, the guys aren't motivated. Like there's something off. And usually that starts in the locker room. It starts with the, whatever it is that the coach is preaching to the team, you got to get them to buy in. And it doesn't seem like this team has bought in. And then you combine that with the fact that they're like on paper, a lot worse than they were last season because they didn't do a lot in the off season to get better. Uh, because Jerry just thought, you know, he could sit there and twiddle his thumbs and let people walk and, um, not try and replace them. Like, I don't know what anyone was expecting, but it's, I'm kind of, it's just, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm not glad, but it's just like, at some point, Jerry and the organization have to learn. Like, you've got to try, you've got to compete, you've got to spend money uh, in the off season, or this is the shit that's going to happen. Yeah, and I think it's, I mean, like, I've been a Cowboys fan my entire life. Um, and it's, so it's just frustrating when, I think basically when you're just, you feel like you're experiencing the same thing over and over again, season after season. And then one thing back to your like effort point, I guess I just, I have very little sympathy for the lack of effort when you play 17 regular season games. And I'm, you know, cover a sport where these dudes are going 162. It's like, I mean, come on guys. It's, yep. I, and I know it's physical and I know it's hard, but it's like, man, I mean that, that effort should be, that's, it's like, I tell, like I tell my kids, like, what are, what are, you know, you can't control how fast a, a dude's going to throw a ball that you're trying to hit there. You can't control if your receiver catch, makes a catch. You can't re- control whether your offensive line blocks, whatever. And the, again, again, this is you sports and I get it. They're prefer- whatever. But I'm just saying, I, and, and it's not like I made this up. I heard this somewhere along the way and I've, it's it stuck because it's true. It's like, what are the things you can control? And there's two things you can control no matter how good you are, how good the team around you is at all times. And that's effort and attitude. Those are the two things you can control all the time. You control your effort, you control your attitude. And to see like grown men that are making millions and millions of dollars. I mean, CD lamb, like acting out on the sidelines, like, what are we doing, bud? Like, come on. Like you just got like, keep it together. Like you could, that that's terrible. And I'm big into like body language and, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's such a terrible look. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to lose your S in the locker room after the game, but like in the middle of it, like you got to keep it together. And right. I'm not just talking about him. That's just what the camera showed. But it's like, I mean, aren't we, aren't y'all, aren't y'all more mature than this to like know how to handle yourself in adverse situations and Sadly, I don't know. It's no. just, it's kind of like, yeah. And then you pair really that with like, all, oh my God, did you see his outfit he wore walking in like posing for pics and stuff? Just like, I don't even want to know how much everything he was wearing cost, but yeah. you pair that with a bad no. attitude during the game and it's like, come on, man. Um, and then Dak walking off the field where he's telling the media, like, just jump off then jump off the bandwagon or jump off or whatever. If you're over us, like he's got the media in his head so bad which is sad because you would think at this point in his career. Yeah, like, and that's unlike him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not like him either. Exactly. And not like I know him, but it doesn't seem like what he's been. But yeah, they're frustrating. They've got the Giants on Thursday night, so saddle up. I yeah. Mean, should be a wild ride next week for sure. Yeah, it should. I mean, um, okay, enough enough Cowboys talk. Okay. What else? Chiefs are undefeated. Yeah, let's move on from them. The Chiefs are undefeated. Chiefs are undefeated. Taylor wasn't there, and I think that that's okay. I don't think everybody needs to panic. But oh, it's fa- wait. People, it- yeah, people are saying Travis looked it's really September sad. September twenty fourth. Oh, it's today. It's They're September breaking up 24th. today. Oh my gosh! Was that Julie? the date, Emily? Are you okay? It was <laughs> September twenty fourth or September twenty eighth. Oh, okay. Well, um, let's see. Um. But we don't have a producer today. I mean, we do. It's Rob's there. Where's Danny? Am I supposed to ask? Yeah, he's doing secret? the dumb zone. What happened? Is he in jail? Is he in jail? <laughs> Danny's in jail. Oh, God. What do you do now? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, he's he's dumb zone. Danny is it. not in jail. He's dumb zone. Oh, I went on the dumb zone last week. It was super fun. How was your experience? Um, I mean, you know, Dan's Dan. Mm-hmm. What, I mean, it's just... He did. Okay. I think for the first time since I've known Dan, I mean, it's been 15 years or whatever. 
I think I rattled him a little bit um, because somebody brought up his like awkward pauses Uh and stuff. Uh (laughs) And I kind of, I kind of pounced on it and brought it up and he was like, he got defensive. He was like, oh, I mean, I I guess I'm just these awkward pauses. I'm so awkward. Sorry. I'm just so awkward with these pauses and whatever. Someone brought like who, like like, who brought up awkward pauses? Danny brought it up. Oh, I think Danny brought it up. Maybe. Oh, before yeah, because you've got to learn then... when you're working doing radio with Dan. You've got to learn to just let it sit for a minute because he'll right. get there. So anyway, <laughs> and then he brought it back up, and I was like, "Ooh, someone sounds rattled about this." Um, but anyway, it was fun and highly inappropriate, and all the things that um, the dumb zone is. But it was it was a great time, and um, I did get one. I got one text from a friend of mine, um, Steve. He texted me. And he just said, Greg, not tight bottom. (laughs) Okay. And so I want to explain it. It made me laugh. And I was like, what is he talking about? I was like, oh shit, the dumb zone. So they were doing birthdays and uh, it was Greg Luganus's birthday. And do you remember Greg Luganus? Mm -mm. Oh my God. Is it going to be a, okay. Is it going to be a, it's inappropriate, but uh, let me joke. God, we, (laughs) well, I mean, (laughs) there you go. So he had a nickname. Um, he hit his head on a diving board. He was a very prolific Olympic diver. Anyway, super handsome. Um, but there was a, a nickname for him that basically nicely translated is Greg, not tight. So think about that. Bottom. So you can figure it out. Mm-hmm. You, you, you didn't figure it out. Did well, you? I'm just loose. <laughs> Okay. Loose bottom. Is it the eight, the word I just said? Yes. Okay. So that was his nickname? <laughs> Loose eight? So that was I'm his not going to say it. Why do I feel like you're Dan and you're trying to trick me into saying something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this was an, this was a Greg Luganus endorsed nickname, but it's, you know, how whatever. But yeah. that was, that was what he, you know, people said or whatever. And so I did say on there, because I didn't want to say that either because i find it highly offensive Uh um so i said greg not tight bottom (laughs) and anyway i I thought it was really funny um so anyway but it was fun the dumb zone was fun okay so danny's doing the dumb zone which is why he's turned his back on us and the rest of the mom game listeners Mm -hmm. and there's rob just hardly knew him rob just holding it down i know um okay but since i'm not there update the studio is it are we is it going to yeah. happen next week? Yeah, it looks great, Rob. What are we thinking? Okay. He's giving me the thumbs up for next week. Thumbs up? Okay, so t- in our, we got. I ordered some stuff. The table mm-hmm. already got delivered. I meant to tell you all that. Hopefully, Rob found it. The table that the refrigerator is going on. We're going to have a refrigerator that's yeah. being delivered tomorrow. And then a little cabinet for storage. And then Greg found this cool stuff. We ordered another sign. Like we, It's all coming together, people. And we can't wait to show it to you guys. So that'll be next week. Yeah. Um I'm sorry. I'm discombobulated. That's okay. We were, we were doing sports and so we got through Cowboys and then, uh, college. Oh yeah. Uh, Mizzou won, right? Mizzou won. And I, I was actually at, um, the Ranger game during the Mizzou game with Tylock because they had a big like customer and partner appreciation thing. So went to that, but we were, I was following it on, Kelly's phone with him because it went to overtime with Vanderbilt and um we Vandy's ended, better this year. Vandy missed a field goal that would have won it and it was like a 30 something yarder. So we got really lucky lucky and now we're still undefeated. So I'm sure we dropped a little bit on the rankings. I'm not sure, but um we were number uh, 11. Seven. It was what the late, uh, latest I look at. Yeah. yeah I think that's, 11. That's valid. Um, the Red Raiders. <laughs> yeah. Red Raiders won. Um, they got a win over Arizona state, which I think is big. So now we're three and one, which listen, it was a rough couple weeks to start the season, but hopefully on a a positive trajectory, I'm going to the game, the Baylor game, um, in a couple weeks, three weeks, I think I'm super excited. I haven't been to Lubbock in a couple years for a game. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be fun. I'll get to see my niece and nephew and my sister's coming in town and we're going to stay with friends. It should be super, super fun. That's awesome. So yeah, go that Red Raiders. Be fun. Yeah, Texas still 4-0 at the top, Georgia 3-0, and Ohio State, Alabama, Tennessee, <sighs> rounding out that top five. Yep. SEC is dominant. Dominant. 
That's, yep. I mean, for real. Yeah. Um, okay, um, what else is on our list? I have, um, I did have one question, like, back to NFL, is I don't, I don't know if Henry's like this, but Ryder is so obsessed with fantasy football. He has two teams, like one he's the commissioner of, and then the other one uh, is some friends from his football team. And it's, in my opinion, like it's ruined watching football for kids, <laughs> or at least for him. Like he, first of all, won't watch the Cowboys, and that's what we want to watch in our house for obvious reasons. And he gets like mad because he doesn't have any Cowboys on his team, and he can't believe that we'd want to take the one big TV and watch the Cowboys because it doesn't like serve him in any way with his fantasy team. And he wants to like just kind of flip around and like stare at the iPad, and he like watches the iPad and the scores more than he watches football. And like, I just feel like it's it's ruining football watching for maybe everybody, but especially little kids who don't know any other way like it's a, still a fairly I guess new-ish concept for adults but kids think that this is football like this is how you watch football is you have right. your little team and you follow the numbers on your computer and it's pissing me off a little bit yeah okay yeah I think that's a great question a great subject because I wonder like do you do, does he have loyalty to any team in particular not really so like is there so and see there's there's the problem yeah so like i mean not a problem i mean that sounded so dramatic well there's your problem <laughs> you've identified the issue he doesn't have a team that he roots for but if he has a team that he roots for usually that will trump i mean at least it was in the case of henry but this is kind of why we stopped just because he, it i don't know he just wasn't I don't, it was just too much like yeah. it was just too much to get in the the waivers and then he'd get pissed off if somebody missed a catch and it's just like what really like can we just focus all of our sports stress on one team? Like maybe two. Yeah. It's like um, too so much he's a, stress. he's a Cowboys, you know, he's a Cowboys and a Chiefs guy and we haven't done fantasy. I think he'll probably pick it up, you know, uh, you know, in a, a year or two, he'll probably pick it back up and want to do fantasy again. Cause we ran the league for a few years um, that he was in. And, you know, I think it was fun in the beginning and then, you know, it just kind of waned. So that yeah. might be the case for Ryder, but I think it just depends on the kid. Yeah. Uh, and if they've got a team, but yeah, sounds like Ryder is, he's got that com competitive gene. Oh in my him gosh. And, and he's got whatever it is where you get stuff. addicted to things. So I do worry about him. Yeah. <laughs> moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> like even at the game with well, Tyler. I will tell you. I, <laughs> yeah. As someone with an addictive uh, personality and competitive, I would stay away from blackjack tables, oh roulette wheels, oh uh, all that kind of stuff, because it's fantasy football is a gateway drug to gambling. It, it really is. <laughs> and so we were dumb to let him get so into it. I told you about the one time when Kelly was asleep on the couch and Ryder was trying to do, it wasn't DraftKings, but there was another fantasy thing that Kelly does to make actual money from. And Ryder got onto his yeah. phone and was trying to place bets. And Kelly was asleep on the couch. And Ryder stood over him, <laughs> hovered over him with his phone to use his face ID to unlock his phone <laughs> while he was asleep and started placing bets oh. for real money. <laughs> Kelly that didn't realize it until later. I know. I was like, wait, oh, why, yeah. am I, why am I out like, you know, 40 bucks on this app? And then he's like asking Ryder and Ryder was like, oh. He was like, how did you do That's that while amazing. I was sleeping? I know. He's smart. Too smart for his own good. And got to keep him oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> off of well, keep the us gambling updated. path. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Keep us updated on that. Um, we'll try. You had Rangers on your list. Did you well, I was just wondering, specific? like, with the last uh, road trip and everything, like, having won the World Series last season and now obviously a disappointing end to – how this season is going to end, but what are, what are they like on a road trip like this when it's basically over? Like what's their spirit spirits, temperaments, all that like? I mean, I think they, you know, they kind of saw the writing on the wall, you know, after the all-star break when things just didn't go well, that this, because I think they feel like even if they would have snuck into the playoffs, they weren't exactly built for success in the playoffs. I don't know. I just think that, when you play such a long season um, and you do it for, you know, so many seasons, I mean, I think it's probably harder for the young guys because they haven't experienced that. I think the older guys are like, okay, this is just one of those years where it wasn't our year. And, you know, you're able to, to, you know, kind of comprehend that and process it and then move on to what can I do to, 
be better for next season. And I think that's where a lot of them have transitioned into. And um, the thing that's interesting here in Oakland is it's the final series in the Coliseum. Mm. So the, this, the A's will not be playing in Oakland, um, you know, from forever yeah. from here on out. And so like, uh, it's, it, we're supposed to have huge crowds, which I've never experienced huge crowds in Oakland because since I've worked for the team for the Rangers, it's still, they, they really haven't had that yeah. a, a ton of success. They've always kind of hung around and they've always pieced together a roster that, you know, that where they get the most out of their guys and all that kind of stuff. But I've never seen like huge crowds at the Coliseum. So I'm dying to see what that's going to be like. Um, and then the last game, you know, everyone is, I mean, not everyone I've heard from a the number of people like be careful on Thursday. And I'm like, what do you mean? Be careful. Like the A's fans are like some of the most Gentile, like Gentile. That's like, yeah, I was wondering, like I was stopped down religious just thinking term. about that word. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I don't know anything about their religious affiliation. <laughs> gentile. It's like you had to put a little extra emphasis on the word gentle. So you turned I, it into I wanted to else. really, I wanted. They're so Gentile. I wanted, I wanted to really hit home with this. You're gentle. mindful and Gentile. They're I feel very, like it would be a third yes. word in that family. <laughs> yes. They're demure. They're mild. They're gentle. Um, I don't know if they're Gentiles or not, but they're <laughs> definitely gentle. So they're very like they're not like hardcore fans, and I mean they are. They're but they're not like mean. It's they're not like, not, like in Philly, Philly or, yeah, you know, or New York, whatever. And so, but and I talked to Jenny Kavnar, who's been on our show and does play by play for the A's, and I was like, what, what, what do you mean? What should we expect? And she's like, you know, she said honestly, think about it more like, or what I'm anticipating is like a college football fan base rushing the field after the game and it's not so much to like celebrate a win or whatever but like maybe they want to get their hands on some dirt from the infield or you know what i mean grab any sort of i don't know uh artifact yeah memorabilia that they can snag and so that there might be and so i don't think that my safety is in doubt but it's like once the game is over i'm just gonna need to you know get the hell out of there as quick as i can so have a plan they can do whatever they need to do you need to be airlifted well, out, like, we'll, and just, uh, yes. <laughs> just um, come scoop you out, and then you'll be airlifting. flying up into the sky. Well, but in all seriousness, I do think if we win that game, you know, usually I do an interview on the field after a win. I do have a feeling that if they'll have a contingency plan for me, that if we win that game, I would do the interview somewhere else, and yeah. I would not. We would not stay on the field because I'm pretty sure our players are going to be told. As soon as the game ends, get get out just in case. Yeah. So I don't think anybody's super worried about like our safety or we're going to get, you know, attacked. I mean, it's not, no one's angry at the Rangers. Um, no one's angry at the players. They're angry at the but owners. But they will so, anyway, take you down if you're in there. But way. they could storm the field. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to mess around with it for sure. Um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting just this last series in yeah. Oakland and it's so weird because one of my favorite memories of my entire career happened at the Coliseum. And that's when we, we clinched the division in 2010. Um, it, up until when we won the World Series, that was my favorite memory of all time, even above A-Rod striking out, um, Neftali Felice striking out A-Rod to go to the World Series. That It even trumped that memory for me. Um, World Series now takes the cake. But yeah, um, so it'll be fun. And then we go to Anaheim um, after that. And then it's off season for everyone. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think the guys handle it pretty well because they're, like I said, it's such a long season. It's yeah. not like this was just an all of the sudden thing that happened. It's something that they could kind of foresee. So, yeah. Anyway, they'll be back next year. Hopefully, they um, will. A little better equipped to handle things. So, mm-hmm. anyway. Well, enjoy your um, last road trip. Enjoy that I peace and will. quiet. I know it is kind of nice to see. I did set my alarm this morning at 4 a.m. to wish Henry good luck at his football game tonight. Oh. So, oh. and then I went back to sleep. <laughs> um, okay. What's on your feed? Do we want to dive into marriage sleeping or we want to keep? Let's keep in it that? in our tackle box. Let's put a pen keep in it. In, it. Oh, keep it in the tackle yeah, box. Yeah, because that's going to be okay, a good one combo. More. It is. Okay. And then news desk. I want to mention one thing um, because this just happened and we just talked about Henry football. So we, so 
we're transitioning. So a lot of parents, you know, and kids have just been in sports that are coached by parents and it's all friends and not all, but you know, people, you know, and whatever, all this stuff. So junior or seventh grade for Henry, this is the first time, I mean, he's played travel ball. So I guess it's not, it's not unique. It's not new for him. Um, you know, cause he's been on teams with, you know, coaches that aren't parents and, yeah. um, you know, all that stuff, but middle school is often middle school sports are oftentimes the first time that, you know, parents don't have a say in who plays, how often they play, what team they're on, all that kind of stuff. So I was very adamant with, you know, Mike and I both and Henry, like, we're not asking, we're not asking questions, like whatever, let, you know, they'll tell us. Um, I did at, kept keep asking Henry, like, because if you make the A team, you play on Tuesday nights. If you make the B team, you scrimmage on Saturdays. So I was wanting, I'm like, which, so which one is it? I was trying to figure out, do I need to take off for his first game? All that kind of stuff. So I was kind of beating Henry down. Henry's like, mom, I don't know. And I'm like, he was like, I mean, if you really want to know, ask the coaches. I'm like, I'm not asking the coaches. Like you've lost your mind. We will not communicate. Like we're not going to be those parents. Yeah. And so, but we communicate through the coaches communicate with us through this app called sports you. And so there's these like, you know, chat forums, like there's one for football. There's one for like all of the McLean athletics and um, all that kind of stuff. And so, um, someone asked on Friday, you know, if the B team was having a scrimmage the next morning and the coach responded, no. And then, um, some, another a parent chimed in and was like, Oh, so you're telling me my kids woken up at 5 a.m. Yeah. for the last six weeks and worked his butt off and oh, no. blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, I'm like panicking for this parent because it. the thing is now they're old enough and they're at the age where th- that kid probably now because of the that comment by the parent, which I don't know. I mean, that's that definitely didn't do him any favors, you no. know, and it's just like. Yeah, it's, that's and, not what those you know apps are for. Well, and here's the deal: I get it. I get the frustration. Your yeah. kid, I mean, you email. know, your kids work, but it's like, it, it, right? Yeah, that's probably the best way. Like, you know, and there, it, there's going to be times when, you know, I mean, there's going to be times when, and Henry, that, that from what I understand, it's a week to week thing, whether you're on the A team or the B team. So if you work your tail off, you had the opportunity maybe to get moved up, and if you don't play well, then not you, and if you don't practice hard you the you know the you could go move down i don't know but it's just like the it, i don't know i just it's so I'm like, cringy it's so hard for parents <clears throat> especially when they've they've had so much say in things yeah uh in their their kids athletic lives yeah. up until that point and they just really don't know how to handle it um but yeah it's i was so cringy for him and then the coach sent out another one that said like everybody wear a red red shirt tomorrow to school, like whatever and he commented, this parent commented, uh, everyone are just the ones who are playing. And I was like, Oh, oh my gosh. No, no, Jeez. No. He's so mad. He's, He's so, mad. so mad. He's not letting it go. I know. Oh. I know. So he, anyway, he I just, to go have a meeting. I thought this would be, he, he, yeah. And that's what I was saying. Like I get the frustration and I, I mean, I'm sure Henry would be equally as frustrated. Let me tell you something. It's probably going to happen to him when basketball comes because the kid is just not, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I mean, who knows? It could very well. But anyway, regardless, like you, it's a meritocracy at this point. Like you got to earn it. And if, and there's going to be other kids that are better than you. And yeah, it's just, it is what it is. But I thought it was just oh, like a welcome to middle school athletics. And right. one other thing I wanted to tease is that we're going to have Jeff Francoeur um, who used to play for the Rangers, um, is a color analyst now for the Braves and he played for us for a while. And I love Frenchie and he's got like a podcast. They have this whole kind of youth sports centered, uh, program podcast, all that kind of stuff. So Frenchie's going to come on with us in a couple of weeks. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. Um, he has some really eye opening things to say about youth sports and the way our kids are getting kind of overused, burned out, all that kind of stuff. And I feel like he's a really he's going to be a really really cool guy to talk to. Yeah, um, I'm excited that subject, for that so. too. It's something that we kind of yeah. touch on at least almost every week, you know. So, and they've made yep. a whole platform about this, and it's doing really yeah. well because obviously a lot of kids have big thoughts on, or a lot of adults have big thoughts on youth sports and their kids and everything. So, I'm really looking forward to that too. Um, a few. Um, okay, let's wrap things up. Oh, 
with the yeah. happenings you're gonna do happening i sure was and then can we keep i i, I sure was i thought um i saw this song you posted can we put a pin in that and put it in our tackle box yep let's put this in the tackle box okay i just thought it was really how about if we in, how about if we instead of saying we put a pin in it since it's going in our tackle box we'll put a hook in it yeah let's let's put a hook in it lingo. yep and right, we'll, put a hook in we'll that. cast right. that reel next week um, oh, geez. This keeps going. <laughs> Even Rob's groaning now. Hi, Rob. Welcome to the Julie experience. <laughs> I'm the Julie. cheesiest person you'll ever meet. Um, mom game happenings, because we do have some mom game happenings in this one. Uh, first one is this weekend. We've been talking about this one for a while. I'm super excited about it. Uh, it is with our friends over at Pro Slat, which is a garage store, and they are having their grand opening uh, this Saturday, uh, and it's at their location in Richardson. It is just off of like the Access Road of seventy five and in, in Royal Lane, um, and their showroom is really cool, really beautiful. Uh, you kind of have to go see it to to get the whole experience, and so we're inviting everybody out to come check out their showroom. And then there's also going to be a, a dumb zone live show, um, on Saturday. And this is going to be going down from 11 AM to 2 PM pro slat. Of course, did this beautiful slat wall behind us. And we're going to have more of it in our mom game studio. There it is. It's so nice. And so you can put hooks on all of this and in my garage, they came and helped me out with my garage, which was a total disaster. Uh, and there's some baskets, there's some shelving. We have a really cool like net, um, kind of basket thing where you can put a bunch of your balls for all of the sports. It is wonderful. Highly recommend everybody going to proslat.com, see what they have to offer. And then you can just click on the events page too, and it'll give you all of the information about the Saturday event, as well as a cool Friday event that they're doing for uh, people that work in the home building industry. Um, that's on Friday night. So there's an RSVP for that one. Both of these events are going to have food, drink, fun. Um, I'll be there on Saturday. I'll probably be there for a bit on Friday as well. There it is because Rob is amazing. Uh, so that is the information for Saturday. It says 11 to 5 on the website. Our kind of window of time within there is 11 to 2 where we're going to be doing all of our stuff. And you can see the address there. Andrew Lott is wonderful. He's the general manager at that store. And he will help you hook it up for your garage if you want uh, to spoil your husband or if you are the husband and you want to spoil yourself. Go to proslat.com. Also, uh, our partner over at Susan G. Komen, who was the benefactor of our um, recent event at Kendra Scott, uh, they have a lot of cool stuff coming up as well. As you know, uh, I'm a breast cancer survivor, so this is one that is near and dear to my heart. Komen does so many wonderful things um, in the field to try and find an end, a cure for breast cancer, which we all hope that they can get to someday. Uh, coming up on Saturday, October 5th in Fort Worth is the Fort Worth Walk. Registration for that one is free. This is the one that I chaired uh, last year, which was really fun. I brought the family out. The kids had a great time. They actually talk about it a lot. Um, and that you can sign up for at www.komen.org slash FTW walk. That's on Saturday, October 5th. Um, on October 19th at the campus at Legacy uh, is the 5K registration for Dallas. So they're racing once again. The race was gone for a while and now it's back. It's just $45. And if you want a timing chip, it's $10. For that one, go to Komen.org slash Dallas race. And uh, this is just something that is really cool is that DFW is the only market in the whole country for Komen that's going to have three signature events. So there's three different ways that you can take part and give back to Komen. They're going to have a walk, a race for the cure, and then that three-day walk, which is going to be in November 1st through 3rd, day one in Dallas, two in Fort Worth, and day three back in Dallas. Um, so Komen.org for all of that information, and hopefully you can support. And also, we did start a No Puppet team, Emily. Um, so we'll be blasting out that info on social media and stuff. If anybody maybe can't make it to the walk, but you want to donate, we have a No Puppet team um, that we will all be pushing oh, nice. kind of as a, as a group. And I think it is already at like $600 and we just started it. So we'll see how many or how, awesome. how much money we can raise with that. And a couple more things I want to mention, um, the do it for Durant big event. We have a golf tournament and concert all in the same day, November 8th. It's a Friday. It's going to be amazing. Um, it's going to be so much fun. This is our 10th year to do this event. So it's our biggest ever 
We have the Josh Abbott band playing um, the event at Texas Live that night. I honestly can't remember where the golf is. Maybe like Grapevine Country Club. I need to find that out. Um, terrible. Bad on me for not knowing where the golf tournament is. So we are looking for golfers. We are looking for concert goers. Um, I think there's not very many VIP tickets left. Um, it's going to be an amazing event, all benefiting families impacted by sudden loss in the DFW area. Um, if you want information, details, how to uh, get your tickets, get a team together, just reach out to me on social media. Reach out on the Mom Game accounts. Reach out on my accounts. I will absolutely take care of you as far as pointing you in the right direction. Rob, you are amazing. That's great. Um, so great there you see, if course. you're watching on the screen, great fun golf course. Okay. Um, and then the decade of giving, like I said, this is our biggest jet. We need golfers. We need party goers. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have a live and silent auction. The live auction is off the chain. Trip to the Hall of Fame. Um, it, 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 awesome experiences. Ranger Suite. I mean, it's off the charts. It's amazing. So please, please, please uh, do it for Durrett.com to, uh, to find out the details there or just reach out to me. I promise to take care of you and get you in the right direction. Um, and then we have a huge a huge announcement, Julie. We have a new partner. Um, if you start noticing some changes on our social media that mm. we've upped our game a bit, it's for very good reason. And that is because we've joined forces with Audrey Dolan's media and they are our new kind of like marketing managing firm, which sounds so big time and exciting. And we've needed this for a while and we finally feel like we're big enough to kind of, you know, hand the reins over to someone else yeah. and let them see what they can do with the brand that we've built. And we're so excited. We're so grateful for all of you for sticking with us on this process um, over the last four years and almost five. And so we are super happy to be part of the Audrey Dolan's media family. Um, those, I mean, she's got her S together and her whole team does, and they've got a plan for us. And I think it's going to be a ton of fun um, to see what we can grow, um, how we can grow through them and uh, make our, you know, social media stuff our interactions, our partnerships that much better. So yeah, um, we're so excited. Super excited. This we were is kind of ready whole, to just like throw up our hands. World for us. Like, Help us. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I know. And it's a whole new world for us. And they take so much off of our plate that we need taken off because we have, we've been, you know, hands in a million, you know, going in a million different directions, especially you, Julie, lately, like we needed help. And that's what Audrey Dolan's media is doing for us. So we will keep you updated um, on that partnership. Um, we're going to continue to talk about them and what they're doing for us and uh, what they can do for you or your business or your brand. Um, but so far, so very good with them. And Audrey's going to come on the show in a couple weeks. And we're super excited yeah. about that to kind of give everyone a little bit of a better idea about what they do. But yeah, super exciting time for us. New studio next week. Um, we're going to have a couple guests come in next week. And yeah, we're just yeah. super stoked. So Everybody pray for me in Oakland and uh, you don't get trampled. Cranberry. Pray for cranberry. Well, and cranberry's kids. already gone. Maybe Julie will tell him. I, I know. <laughs> um, okay. Well, Julie, this was fun. Um, I'll see you next week in our new day. Yay. So Can't excited. wait. Be careful okay. out there Yay. if you see Barack Obama okay. um, again. Say hi. Do something. Do Give something your cooler. Love. Yeah, I know. I gotta <laughs> do something way cooler than what I did. I'm so disappointed in myself. It's okay. Um, okay. All right. We will see everybody next week. We will. In the meantime, that's all for now. Out. Mom game out. Mom. Mom game out. <laughs> oh, you look so lonely without me. The Mom Game is proud to partner with local Geico offices. Victoria Elliott proudly serving your local community.